Hi, my name is John of JWH Millinery and welcome back to my channel. Yes. So, this week, oh word, yes. Um, I'm excited for this week. So, this week we are working with holographic vinyl. Oh my God, this stuff is amazing. Um, you've probably seen from the thumbnail anyway, but I'm just going to show you a little bit of the vinyl. Um, oh, this stuff is gorgeous and it's holographic. It's not iridescent, it's holographic. Um, my understanding is uh, holographic... What is the difference between holographic and iridescent? Let me double check. What is the difference between holographic and iridescent? Here's what I found. Ooh. Right. Okay. So a holographic item breaks the spectrum of light and the same fleck of glitter will reflect the whole spectrum of the rainbow. But iridescence is reflective and glittery, but only one colour, so it appears to glow. So you have seen from the title of this image, not only are we working with holographic vinyl, but the main inspiration from the for this hat comes from the New Steps single video, which came out a week ago, two weeks ago. Oh, I was so excited when I saw it. And it was all pastel, and they're all wearing, I'll put some pictures now, they've got like vinyl, holographic, peplum corsets and harnesses. It's like, oh, fantasy, fantasy, fantasy. I was like, I have to make something similar. So I actually wanted, my initial idea was to make something along the lines of the corset that Lisa was wearing, uh, which has the peplum. And I wanted it kind of like with the, with the crown, but it didn't turn out like that. So this is what we actually ended up making. Ta -da! It's quite weighty as well. So uh, this is a cinema base with one, two, two, three kind of peplumy things and three iridescent, not iridescent, hollow roses, flowers at the back. Um, I haven't added any head attachment to this yet because uh, I'm trying to figure out how to make my own kind of bands because it's going to need a thicker headband than than that and I've just realized I actually have like a thread hanging down there as well which I need to throw need to get rid of um yeah so uh this is this week's hat uh I'm going to talk you through how I made it how I made the pattern um everything else will be listed it will be at the end of this video so on the screen now you'll you'll see a breakdown of all the different segments of the video so you can actually skip to the bits that you want to see remember question of the day is at the end of the video so look out for that um so if you want to see how i made this let's get started so before i do anything i need to make a pattern for the circle brim the pattern drafting technique isn't something that I made up and I actually followed a tutorial on YouTube which is linked in the description box below. It's a two part series so I'll link both but I'll also do my best to explain here. Also note before, I did change the crown halfway through the process and I was lucky that it still fit so just be aware of this. The brim I'm making is a um, 1440 brim which is technically four circles brought together to fit around one circle. I needed to know the circumference of the base and the original block that I wanted to use was 57 centimeters so this means the inner circumference of the pattern had to fit four inner circles around a 57 centimeter. I believe the calculation to work out the pattern goes as follows circumference plus open bracket seam allowance times eight close brackets equals total circumference which doesn't make any sense then taking that total circumference divide that by four will give you x x divided by 6.28 will give you the radius which is the radi um the radius is the distance from the center to the circumference so knowing that calculation i knew i wanted a 57 centimeter 
in a circumference. So I converted that to millimeters and started working out and filling in the calculation. So my calculation goes as follows. 57 millimeters plus my seam allowances times eight. So I'm having a 25 millimeter seam allowance on either side to join the circles together gives me 770 millimeters. Divide this by four gives me 192.5. Take that figure, divide that by 6.28 gives me 30.65 millimeters which is the radius from the center to the circumference. So that first, that 30.65 is my dead space at the big, in the middle of the pattern. I rounded this up to 31 millimeters and added on the brim length, which I was given 26, 260 millimeters, sorry, giving me a total of 291 millimeters. On a piece of paper along the length, um, I marked out 31 millimeters and 260 millimeters from a corner point and just went round um, like 90 degrees, just marking that at 31 and 260 and repeated this. Um, then when I joined the dots, cut it out and then I repeated that um, another three times and taped the pieces together, noting my pattern on, uh, noting on my pattern the seam allowance. Okay, so now we have a pattern, we can start cutting the vinyl. Here I'm using two types of vinyl, a clear and a holographic vinyl. So I just wanna give a big shout out to Catherine at Hatter's Millinery Supplies, as she kindly sold me some of this from her personal stash, but I'll link to the clear vinyl in the description. If I can find more of this holographic fabric vinyl in a roll, I will put it on my Instagram, uh, social media but I'm struggling to find like a length I can find a four sheets a three sheets but I can't find rolls so as soon as I do I'll let you know on social media so to preserve the holographic I cut two from the clear and two from the holographic vinyl and I match the inner circles don't cut the inner circles away though just cut into the vinyl um, to your inner circle line to make little tabs. And this is how we will attach this to the wire. Then using a sewing machine, sew your circles together using a straight stitch. Um, just be sure to use the seam allowance that you marked and to sew the seam allowance on the same side as you want to get one shot sewn with vinyl. So if you've put your seam allowance at 25 millimeters like I did, make sure your seam allowance is 25 millimeters. <coughs> if you used two inches of a uh, seam allowance, make sure you use two inches because that will distort the inner, inner circumference and it won't fit your piece as well. So once you've done your um, straight stitch, go then lay your seam allowance flat and go over your seam allowance with a zigzag stitch and use any colored thread that you think works as you will actually see this. And this also means you just need to make, your, um, make sure your stitches are nice and neat. Put this to one side and grab some thick millinery wire and I'm using a thick gauge black wire from Hatter's Millinery Supplies. Measure out the length you will need and add say three to four inches and the extra inches we will bind together with cotton to, to secure and while you're winding your cotton on just to hold them the ends together just keep checking it's not changed sizes as you cover it then start securing your inner brim seam allowance onto the wire i'm using bulldog clips to secure this onto the wire before i sewed the vinyl of the wire using a blanket stitch okay so um, where are we up to? So I have done the the holographic base, and <clears throat> I um, I was going to use this block and make a crown out of the holographic base using the pillbox block and then attaching the brim here. However, because I've you know we me measured this for the wire. So I've already gone ahead and I've blocked a base using my um, trusty beret block. Now this block is roughly the same shape 
the same size, sorry. So it's roughly the same size. So it should, in theory, still work like this. But we're going to do something slightly different. What I'm actually going to do is, um, if you look here, it's not sitting 100%. So I'm going to just mould the wire to fit this shape. And I'm going to sew it to the edge and see what happens then. So I'm going to crack on with that now and then uh, catch up with you in a second. I found that using the vinyl, you've got to be very careful where you place your stitches. So I took my time, popped on some music, steps obviously, and slowly worked my way around the brim, sewing the brim using thread which matched the base, in this case, navy thread. Okay, so I'm liking how this is going at the moment. Now you probably notice, and let me zoom in, so here, it's not sitting on the edge of the base, which is fine. Um, but I would say this external brim is quite big. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm probably going to cut it to about here. So I'm probably going to cut around uh maybe three and a half inches maybe three and a half inches off this brim i'm going to cut it as one circle and then i'm probably going to um make another wire a smaller one and put the second one on top so I'll maybe do one like this so then there's two layers of the brim um, but I am liking how it's looking. Um, I, I'm a little worried about the, um, the lack of being able to see though. So what I might end up doing is something with this brim at the front uh, as well. So I don't quite know yet. I don't think that's catching on camera, um, but yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this down. Oh, dear me, don't fall. I'm going to sew this down onto here and then move on to the next step, whatever that step may be. I went around and trimmed the brim by three and a half inches, measuring at first and then measuring as I went round. Just be sure to use good sharp fabric scissors for this as you can't hide the raw edges. Don't worry about using a pen to mark as the ink just rubs off, but I would always just make sure you test this with your pen first. So this is as far as I've got so far. So instead of wiring the outside of this what i've actually gone ahead and done was cut this different segments so this is one of the holographic ones and then i'm just gonna fold it drape it round um put the thing and stitch it down now what i'm gonna do on this one however so let me just cut that off is Somehow I need to hide the stitches, so I'm probably gonna um, I don't know if you can actually see what I'm doing. Let me just there we go. can you see that now? Yeah. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna stitch it along like this and then turn it out if I can, just to try and hide the stitches because you can't really hide the stitches very well on here. Um, the whole, uh, what I was going to try and do was gather it together, but I just think it would look a bit stupid. So I'm going to go around with another lot of the holographic. <coughs> and then here at the back, so you can see this here, what I was thinking was having these up. 
so I'm not going to pin that because I don't want to put a hole. So that the front, it looks more like this. And then make some um, flowers to go here. So we shall see what they look like when they're together. But if you look close up, I don't know if you can see that. You can, st you can see the stitches because you can't really hide them very well in the vinyl. So yes, this is kind of a... It's kind of a let's see what actually happens type project so yeah this was the tricky part as vinyl doesn't have any grain ease or bias so you can't tuck away your stitches or you can't hide them so i worked very slowly positioning my stitches where they were not too visible but still held, held the vinyl where i wanted it and here i just used the holographic vinyl because the clear i used for some flowers Taking that clear vinyl from the brim that we've cut away, um, I cut some ho extra hollow vinyl and formed some flowers. To do this, I just twirled it around until I found something I liked. The first flower I loved, it was quite um, angular and ge geometric. The, the second two, they were nice, they just didn't have that geometricness of the first one, but vinyl will tell you what it wants to do. The flowers were sewn onto the base of the hat, behind the brim which helped push up the brim vertically to give the piece some height. Well, I thought I'd bring her in a little bit closer. This, oh my God, I am absolutely in awe with this and how it turned out. <sighs> Few things to note, vinyl. It's a bit of a bugger to work with. Um, especially clear vinyl. I mean, the holographic one is clear as well. So yeah, um, it, you, can, you can see some of the stitches like not everything is hidden, but you can see most of them. Uh, you can see some of them, sorry, not most of them. And uh, yeah, I mean, she's looking cute, right? She's looking hella cute. One thing is this front part of the brim might just need trimming down a little bit more. So I think I'm uh, off camera. I'm kind of like after this, I'm gonna I'm gonna trim that down. Ah. Uh, so yeah, that was, uh, that's this week's video. And I'm so happy how this turned out. Like, seriously, it's amazing. And uh, hopefully, I'm gonna set, do you think I should send a, uh, send a picture DM to the ladies of Steps and see what they think? Hmm, maybe I should. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Okay, so last week, I asked you who is or who are your favorite 90s noughties pop acts because I knew I was making this. I kind of wanted to give a hint. Uh, nobody really answered apart from one. So we have T Laser who said Prince, very good. Yes, yes, we, we are I would, like Prince. Prince is, I would say he was a pop act though he was more of a an icon um and the spice girls which were pure pop pure pop so thank you um t laser for your answer um thank you so this week's question of the week is so it's two parts so a what is your favorite color scheme to work with so like what do you what do you what are you drawn towards and if you could get rid of a colour, what colour would that be? Personally, I am very drawn to, I thought it was yellow and purple together as a, co as a combo. It actually turns out to be pink and yellow. I don't know why. I always thought it was yellow and purple because I really liked that colour combination. But looking through my previous hats that I've made on this channel, I seem to be drawn towards pink and yellow as a colour combination. So maybe that is my favorite. I mean, holographic is my ultimate, but it's not necessarily a color. It's just a collection of colors. 
and if I could get rid of a colour, I would probably say, I would probably say neutral, because it's neither, neither there, either here nor there, like, you know, what's neutral? Like, give me some colour, some bright colour. Um, but let me know in the comments down below what your favourite colour combination is and what colour you would get rid of if you could. Big shout out every week to my patron, Reggie. Thank you very much for your ongoing support. Um, thank you. And um, I don't know if you, uh, hopefully you've been getting the videos a day early. So uh, let me know in the comments down below, are you watching them early? Because um, I'm putting them up there on Patreon for you. If anybody else wants early access to the videos, like a day early, or a lot of many other sort of things that, that Patreon, or Patreon only offers, hit the Patreon link in the description box below. The tiers starting from £1 per month. Well, I've really enjoyed this, this week's video. Um, sometimes I get a little bit stressed when I'm making them, especially trying to like crank out a video, like get it done, filmed, edited up every week on a Wednesday. Um, but this one was an absolute pleasure to work with. I loved every second of making this and I still have uh, some hollow fabric still to work with. So I'm thinking of maybe making the harness myself. Like, I don't know. What do we think? Mm, we'll see. Oh, Lee's, no H's, whereas it's on his shoulder, but I definitely like like the, the bondage harness that Lee's wearing. Um, yeah, anyway. Yes, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, I've enjoyed this. Join me next week for another video and uh, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. All that razzmatazz and I'll see you next week. Bye.